Hello my friends. So it's going to be a pretty interesting video. I'll start off by saying I was in 3D Coat, which is a 3D software and I found this particular tool. So this tool essentially enables you to adjust geometry using this kind of curve, which I thought was extremely interesting. I actually wondered if you could do something similar within Blender. And the short answer is yes, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can. So this is the effect that we're going for. So this is Blender and as you can see, we've successfully recreated the ability to use some sort of curve to adjust the geometry in a similar manner to which we just saw in 3D Coat. So I'm going to be walking you through how we can do this and how we can achieve it via geometry nodes. Don't worry, don't worry, it's not scary. It's less than 10 nodes. In fact, it's less than eight nodes. For those who just want to see the node tree and just want to skip through it, no problem. These are the nodes that you need. Otherwise, I'm just going to walk you through it. So without further ado, let us indulge, my friends. But just before we do, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspirational classes that you can use to deepen your knowledge and creativity. Whether you want to learn a new skill, craft, or perhaps even find a new hobby, their premium classes launch every single week. So there's always something new to discover. Speaking of something new to discover, if you're new to Blender, there's actually a brilliant course by Southern Shotty 3D called Blender 3D, your first 3D character. And as you can see, <laughs> it's pretty interesting. It walks you through how you can create your first character in 3D within Blender. It walks you through several interesting and beginner friendly topics such as the interface, sketching the character, modeling basics, etc. So if you're new to Blender and you find the tutorial I'm doing right now is a little bit more difficult, Skillshare has you covered. So the first thousand people to use the link on my code on screen will get one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Without further ado, let us get back to the video. Okay, so here we are in Blender. Welcome. The first thing we're going to need to do is navigate to Geometry Nodes. So Geometry Nodes should be in a workspace tab at the top corner here. So click onto that. It will then be placed into a screen similar to this. What we then need to do is select onto the cube and press this icon here to create a new Geometry Node Network. And straight away, we have created our first Geometry Node Network. Now, what we're going to need to do is actually disconnect this group input from the group output. So click onto this green arrow and just disconnect it. Or if you have node wrangle enabled, press control, right click and just cut the line. So how does this work? Effectively, we're actually using two curves to drive each other to make the effect that we see here. So how can we accomplish this? I'll show you. The first node that we're gonna to need to create is actually a curved line. So press shift A, search and type in curved line. Then we're gonna to need to plug the curve output into geometry and as you can see straight away, we have a curve right here. It's actually quite short, so we're going to go to the end point, go to the z-axis and change this to 2 meters. Perfect. So right now we have a curve, but we need to change this curve into geometry. So how do we do that? We're going to need a curve to mesh node. So press shift A, type in search and type in curve to mesh. So grab the curve to mesh and drag it halfway between the curve line and the group output. And right now we can see we've actually changed our curve to geometry, but it has no thickness. So in order to create thickness, what we need to do is utilize this profile curve feature. So we're actually going to use another curve to drive the thickness of our curve to mesh. So in space, press shift A, type in search and type in curve circle. And we're going to use this curve circle to drive the thickness of our curve to mesh. So we're going to plug the curve into the profile curve. And as you can see straight away, we've actually created a thickness here. So if I adjust the radius, you can actually see we're changing the thickness, but we don't actually want to be using that. Cause if you remember, we're using a graph to drive the radius of our curve. So how do we do that? So what we're going to do is press shift A and type in resample. We're going to resample this curve because we want it to have as much geometry as possible. We're going to place this after the curve line in the beginning. So after the curve line, but before the curve to mesh, and we're going to change the count to 100. Now remember, we want to be able to drive the radius of the curve using a graph. So what we're going to do is type in shift A, type in set curve radius. And we're going to place this set curve radius after the resample curve, but before the curve to mesh. I'm going to move everything across so it's easier to see the node network. So to walk through, we have our curve. We've resampled the curve to give it more resolution. We have a set curve radius, which will enable us in a second to drive the curve. We have then plugged this into curve to mesh to make it actual physical geometry. We use a curve circle to drive the thickness or the shape of the curve. And we've then plugged this into the group output. So next we need to drive the radius using the graph. So what we're going to need to do is press shift A, type in float curve to so plug the float curve into the radius. So you can see if we try to drive this, nothing's actually happening. That's because we have one last node to type in. Press shift A and type in spline 
parameter. And we're going to plug the factor of the spline parameter into the vector. And as you can see, if I now adjust the curve, we're actually given the effect that we wanted. And we're driving <laughs> the geometry using this network, which is absolutely incredible. So we're currently at seven nodes, but we need to actually add one more. We don't actually have a material on here. So we're going to add the material by going to this tab here. We're going to create a new material. We're going to type in gold. Then going to change the base color to a yellow or orange. Put the metallic all the way to one and roughness quite down. Strangely enough, the material isn't showing up on our geometry. And that's because we need to go into our geometry node setup, type in shift A and type in set material. And if we input this as the last node after our curve to mesh, select this icon here and select the gold material that we just created. Just like that, we have our material allocated and we can make changes and it will update in real time. Even if we go to our float curve and we adjust the parameters, it's being updated. Now, if you wanted to reset the curve, just click onto this icon here, click reset curve. You can reset the curve and try again. So this is the effect. Hopefully this video wasn't too long. If you like this video, please share, subscribe, comment, and like. If you end up making something with this, then please tag me in it or share me or show me. I'd love to see it. Anyway, my friends, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.